Dude, we got up on that 9.30. Yay. We're here. We're practicing starting on time and oh. organizing everything so that we can be good when we go live. We're going to do lives. Yeah. That's very exciting. Yeah. Good chew with your little folded paper because you haven't bought a notebook yet. Um, Yesterday so, was an interesting day. Yes. <laughs> Very interesting. I'm not even going to watch the episode. I'm just going to post it. I don't want to see it. I'm going to watch all of those. I I'm going to watch them. Very, I'm just going to skip that one. You're not going to watch yeah, that one? I don't like that one. Why? You got all emotional. I was very impressed by you. Why? You didn't want to stop because I asked you if you wanted to just break. No. I think it's important. Yeah. Because a lot of people feel in a lot of type of ways. And it's so it's hard a lot of the time to be honest about that. And I, I was thinking, I'm like, oh, well, I don't know if I want to post this stuff on my Instagram and stuff like that. But I think it's really important. And I think people need to see it. And I don't think enough people do it. Because it's like... <laughs> I, I kind of hate it when you go, when you like, when these like big guys, like, you know, Denzel Washington, you see a lot of him or like these Robert Downey Jr. And then they're talking about their life and then they're crying about it after the fact. And like, oh, you're so brave, you know, and it's like, cool. Yes. But like, there's no way you would have put that out when you were going through it mm. because now it's like after the fact. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like. <clears throat> fat people that put their well not anymore but <laughs> restart it's like it's like uh somebody posting their transformation after the fact after and it's like cool you have the before and after photos but you still didn't walk us through how that all happened you know so it's like i think it's important to do it even if i'm not particularly enjoying it because i i <laughs> the whole time yesterday i'm like i know i'm kind of wrong in this and I know I'm upset and I know I shouldn't be. And like, I don't like that this is on camera of me being wrong, <laughs> but I think it's important because it's a big part of the process. Like being wrong is a really big aspect of learning. And it's like the most important part of learning. And I'm spitting everywhere. <laughs> I, I, I really you know. Um, and it's a big part of learning. And I, uh, I thought it was, uh, it was important. But were you wrong? I don't know. I, in some aspects. I shouldn't have gotten hot yesterday or the day before that. Or most of the other. I shouldn't have. You shouldn't get hot. <laughs> There's no reason. When you're upset, you shouldn't let it out. I mean, you should let it out, but you shouldn't, like, do it. You shouldn't act upset in the moment. Yeah. You know? What's the alternative? Just stopping and relaxing and being like okay i need to think this through before anything else happens it's funny to me it's like i was this morning i was watching athletes i was watching cyclists get upset <laughs> like pro cyclists like that crash or somebody hit them or like a spectator got in the way they grabbed the bike they like they they beat up the the, the, the audience oh because a lot of the time like in the toilet france i saw a bunch of it it's like somebody's camera strap like catches a handlebar and the person goes down and oh yeah, or like, um, you know, another rider like taps them and they're like aggressive because they like bump into each other and shit like that. Or, you know, like a mo the motorcycle car or somebody's not paying attention or somebody's like running up next to them and they like punch them in the face. And it's just like, and I was just like thinking, I'm like, well, that could have all just been avoided. <laughs> And then, and then at the same time, I was thinking, I'm like, hmm, the reason why they are pros like that is because they also act like that in some ways. I was thinking that, you know what I mean? What is this one? It's just because you were saying it the other day about Serena Williams at that thing where she was mm -hmm. being really aggressive, but yeah. it's like the only way to get to that level is to be that aggressive. Yeah. So I was thinking about that too. And like the kind of like trying not to be like upset with them for doing those kind of things. And I wasn't like, I was, I understood it because it makes sense. It's like you train your whole life to be here in this moment. Yeah. And then one, and everything is going right. You're doing everything right. And one fucking person is being an idiot. And that's, and that's what 
ends it for you. So what does this mean for you? Like, what's the alternative to quote unquote getting hot? I don't think it has a place in business. Mm. <laughs> Cause it's like, it, uh, you know, and even in sports, I don't really understand it because it's like, just go back next year. <laughs> yeah. Like you're fine. <laughs> it's, it's all right. With the Olympics, I mean, shit like that doesn't happen in the Olympics, but it's like, I understand that you have to qualify and everything like that, but it's like, what good does yelling and screaming do? Hmm. <laughs> it doesn't help in any way. And then also when you get mad on TV, it's never good because then people are like, ah, you punched a guy. And it's like, I was mad. Great. <laughs> you right. still punched a guy. <laughs> and then your team probably drops you because you punched a guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's... But what does it mean for you in the, like, what's the alternative? Like, what are you going to do instead of, like, yelling and screaming? I just have to, like, break that, that, that response. But you have to figure out what your response will be because you have to respond. Yeah, I, and I think it should just be, like, calmness. Like staying still? Yeah. Mm. Because I never, it's weird with me because I never get hot when somebody else is hot you notice that we do it a lot not as much as i do but neither we're never both upset at the same time mm. ever mm -hmm. we're never both angry or hot at the same time yeah um and i'm like that with other people i don't understand people who get into screaming matches mm. i don't i've never had somebody yell back at me <laughs> you know and i've never yelled back at someone I don't, I don't get that. We've had some pretty heated exchanges. I don't know. I don't know. You're usually calm when I get hot. And then when you're hot, I'm, I just, I'm like, stop. That's true. Although you're pretty self-assured, so you kind of go for it anyways. You're like, no, I'm right. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you're not right. <laughs> you're not right. But It's very interesting because like, for me, I, I don't come to the conclusion from like a virtue standpoint. Like some people is like, oh, it's virtuous to be like calm and even keeled. For me, it's it's purely for intellectual reasons. You cannot think if you're angry. It's like you'll see athletes like as you're losing, the more hot you get, mm -hmm. the more you lose because you can't think and be angry at the same time. Same with Serena Williams. Like she saw that the Osaka girl was like kicking her ass yeah. and she kept getting more and more angry. And the more she got angry, the more the girl was like clobbering her. Because you get more impatient and then you act out of anger rather mm -hmm. than skill in your training. I don't know if you remember the last World Cup. Was it the last World Cup it, in Brazil where mm -hmm. the Brazilians lost to the Germans? 6-1. Yeah. Like who gets that against kind of Brazilians in, <laughs> against the Brazilians in Brazil, in Brazil on their home turf. I'm like, what the fuck? As happened? soon as they scored like the second they goal, lost it. Yeah. it was over. They, they the whole game was over. The, it was completely. I watched it but so also, many like, times. Let like uh, Latino people are very hot. They're pretty spicy, They're pretty spicy people. Yeah. And it's good, but it's also like they said it's the passion, it's the fire. Yeah. It, um, with it, what's ice? It's like fuego y hielo, like or something like that. It hey is, Siri, yeah, it is like that size. Yeah, yeah. yeah never mind, bitch. Sorry, I can't um, hear you. Can you <laughs> it's saying? okay. Oh my god, I got it. Um, yeah, it's like you gotta, yeah, you gotta, you gotta stay even so yeah. you can think. I noticed that a lot with individual surfing is interesting. Mm -hmm. Because this guy, the surf heat that I was watching the other day, um, with uh, it was at the end. I think you saw it over my shoulder, mm -hmm. uh, and the guy with the yellow jersey. That's Gabriel Medina. He's twenty years old, mm -hmm. or he was in that in twenty fourteen, um, and during that heat. And that's Kelly Slater. He's forty three. Mm -hmm. He has won twelve world championships. The person underneath him has won four. Okay, <laughs> and um. And is it once a year or like multiple world championships? It's once a year, but it's very hard to win events surfing because you're competing against 30 people. So he's been winning for 14 years? Hmm? 
12 Kelly years. Slater, 12 years. 12 years. Yeah. That's weird. Right? So, Not in a row, but um, like on and off, because he's been surfing for like 25 years. Mm. Or well, he's been surfing his whole life. But anyways, uh, and this guy, Medina, he's, he's a very technical surfer. Like he really gets into people's heads. Like he does the whole like sitting still beforehand and everything like that. And Kelly does the same thing. And it was very interesting to see those mind games. Cause like the way Kelly will be in his heat is like, he's very relaxed. So he'll talk about golf. He'll talk about this, how good it is, how fun it is, mm -hmm. whatever. And then Medina stays completely silent. Yeah. He doesn't talk. He's all, he's like fully in the zone and he usually kicks ass. Because he gets into people's heads and then he like holds priority. It's like all the mind game with him. Nothing is emotional. That's yeah. what he's a very, and people get kind of upset with him because he's a very aggressive surfer. Like he'll drop in on people if it's his priority. Whoa. Yeah. Because he, he like boxes people out so that they can't even get waves. Like it's all a, a strategy with him. It's not just about getting the best wave and having fun. I thought it was like one at a time. You go all together. Yes. No, it's one at a time, but, um, you get priority. Right. So it's like, you know how in like I was explaining to you, there's a line when you surf. Yeah. It's like that. So it's pri it's a matter of priority on the wave. Right. So if you if you're holding priority, the other person can't go. But it's not I go first and then the next wave is yours and then the next wave is no. the other person. Yes and no. So that's the thing. Like if it like that's how he plays it. It's a turn based thing, right? So if you both take a wave in one after the other mm -hmm. and then whoever gets back out first gets the priority again ah okay and then um it's not it's not like just one after another and then it's also like if you hold priority on good waves like if you don't go on a good wave and the other person isn't in the right spot for it so he plays that and it's like it gets in the competitors heads and i was just saying i was like really looking at that i'm like this is very interesting because because um he has zippers like Anyways, because it's like all about like mind games and competition and, you know, skill is only a small part of it. Yeah. But, but who wins out at the end? The aggressive person or the person who is overly more skillful or overwhelmingly more skillful? I, I don't, what, in that competition? Medina won. No, but who has won more? Well, I guess Medina is younger, He's very, so very we'll young. see. Yeah. Mm. And the old guy is not as aggressive as this young guy, right? He used to be very aggressive, mm. but he still kicks ass. Anyways, I don't know. It's like, it's kind of interesting because, I don't know. If you watch Usain Bolt, like how he runs and compared to other runners, he's very relaxed. Super relaxed. And then there's other like super high end, like super top end athletes that are super focused and very serious. Like there's a, it's a really big spectrum. It's very interesting to me, yeah. you know? And then in, in, um, even in like UF, I think UFC is very, a very interesting one mm -hmm. because it's like a lot of the time they're really aggressive with each other, but then there's like the few top guys that are like really mellow mm -hmm. and they're like just cool, fun people. Yeah. And they're, they don't take it super seriously and they don't do that and they kick ass. Like the second they hit, the buzzer goes off, they like, they ruin the other person. I don't know. I, I guess it's like different strokes for different folks. It's like whatever works for you. Like some yeah. people, they need to be in the zone yeah. to, to I don't operate. know about business though. Because it's different in business. Not really. Mm -hmm. There's some people who you know, they're very, very, very focused. Like they only do one thing and that's the whole ball of wax. Like they don't do anything else. And then there are other people who, you know, they have like a lion mentality where like Ra um, Nav Ravikant talks mm -hmm. about this a lot. Like he goes, we aren't like cows that we're meant to graze all day, like work all day. Yeah. We're like lions where one we train, day. You hunt, you kill, and then you rest. So it's like some people, like they're constantly in that state of like work, work, work. And then some people, it's more of like, I, when, I, when I'm in the zone, I'm present, 100% wholly present. And when I'm not, I'm also not thinking about mm -hmm. my work. Where do you lie? 
Uh, when I'm not here, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not thinking about it. when I'm doing something, not when I'm not here, because when I'm not here, I'm thinking about it, yeah. how we can make it better, how like what I can do relationships. But when I'm doing something else, I'm not thinking about this. Like when I'm with my family, if I'm at an event or if I'm doing something with a friend, I'm not thinking. About I think it. I'd agree. I'm the same way. Yeah. It's like if not with everything, not with every activity, because mm -hmm. some things are just mundane and you can yeah. think about multiple things. But like if I'm out, I'm out yeah i can get back into it very quickly but i'm out like, i can't if i'm if i'm away for a long time it takes me a long time to power it back up really yes oh, Th no. that's why i don't take long breaks oh i'm not like that i'm ready to go because like i i get bored so i want to come back yeah it's like i want to be in it and i'm like ready to go i took an eight day oh my god you're stripping this morning yeah, i had to I get am. my fucking yeah exfoliant and like because mm -hmm. my whole forehead was stripping my my nose was do yeah. you still see it it's no like i don't so gross but i need to do mine i Ugh. need to do mine um it's i was moisturizing so every day to try to keep it from happening no me too but you can't burn, yeah it burned yeah it just burned off um yeah i think that's also where we differ a little bit too because like i don't require time to come back yeah i'm just i'm ready to go no, not me. Because, you know, it's like with music festivals, I'd say too, like I see that a lot. Some people, when they're like really high, not like high literally, but like yeah. when they're like on a high, it it takes them a while to come back down to cool. Yeah. You know, it's I don't. It's different for me. I don't have that. Yeah. I, it's just like I can be here and right here in the next second. But I think you're not as into it as as with other things like those people like you like it but if you never went to another music festival i don't think it would like kill you like it's killing me and it's killing a lot of people that's why they're going to these underground shit, mm. risking their lives because they need it you know mm. um so i think it's like a different like if you never surfed again i think that would be a big problem or like snowboard yeah yeah so but I think it's with that different. i can always go in and out of it i don't have that like that thing you were talking about yesterday too which i've been thinking about it's like i don't i think that's where we differ a lot it's like when i when i think when i when you think of me going like out snowboarding or something it's like i come out like i i remove myself and then it takes me time to power back up but it doesn't that actually helps me stay focused because it takes my mind off it for a minute so i was i was watching something today and they were talking about desire like why people get like depressed and stuff it was like explaining it and i wrote something um so it goes desire is a contract that you agree upon with yourself that you will not be happy until you have this thing however if you have too many desires you'll never be happy because mm -hmm. you can never fulfill all of these things simultaneously. Of they course. will never like all come yeah, together. You can. Um, and I thought about you because like, I think like for me, I want one thing. I want to build a school and um, 50,000 kids from the 50 poorest countries, give them the best of academia and send them back out into the world and do that for somebody else. I want one thing. And I think for so many of us, including probably yourself, it's like you want all of these things. So it's like the happiness is like what you tell me. So the happiness is like, like for me, I'm happy because I can see I'm getting closer and closer to the goal. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it's only one goal. Like, of course, I have like other supplementary things. But I only want one thing. And anyone who knows me knows this. You know, it's like my dream job is to be a stripper. Like, that's my dream job. If we didn't have to. Um, you? No. If we, if we didn't live in this, like, judgmental world, that's exactly what I would be doing. Hmm. And everyone. You? Yes. You, are you hearing this for the first time? No, you've told me before. I just okay. don't believe it. Yes. Dude, are you kidding me? Mark, I... you're too smart to be a stripper. What? 
Are you saying strippers are stupid? No, I'm not saying they're stupid, but the, you have too many goals. You have too many things you want to accomplish. It makes you me have, no. In you, it makes you feel happy. good, but it, it's not something you would do. You can do it as a hobby, but and I encourage you to go and do it as a hobby. Maybe not work as a hobby, but do the pole dancing, do those types of things. Do it because I, it's not. I have no judgment on these people, but you are too goal oriented, and you want to do things. You want to do things of substance. That I think that's the most subs- most thing of substance that you can do because do you understand how right, much you're joy tell- no you're telling me that giving a lap dance is equal to building a school for fifty thousand children you know, and you helping them something? be educated and literally bringing up the world's gdp you you're telling me something? that that's the same thing no this that is a purely selfish thing like any job it's a purely selfish job i don't think any accountant or finance guys out there like ah look at me helping the world it's of your job is a selfish is. thing like you know you pack the bag at the grocery store that's pretty selfish i don't think it helps anyone but so <laughs> you know people with their bagging careers so it's not i'm career. just saying you know that's where i think I would be so happy because it was like you're dancing for a living, you're in the nightlife and everything. But anyway, I hate nightlife. I don't. I really don't like nightlife. I really don't. Okay. I don't like the night. All right. I'm just saying. <laughs> I just. I wanted to make it clear. So I think <laughs> we ought to like figure out our desire. Like I don't think I have many desires, Mark. No. No. No, I don't. We have to figure this out, Steph, because then why are you sad? You know what I want to do? I want to create a roadmap for young people like myself mm-hmm. to be successful so that they don't... Because I I have a certain level of, of chutzpah, as they would say here in New York. Chutzpah. Um, and I, I know I can be successful just just with straight willpower alone <laughs> like i know that for a fact because i just don't give up like if if i tell someone i'm gonna do something i would just do it like it's not i i don't have that thing with me that's like the the weakness thing like i'll just fucking fight through it um do you agree with this why does it matter i'm just saying anyways i for the people's because people can say statements like that all the time and not and they not be true. Sorry. Okay. Um, <laughs> fine. Fine. <laughs> no. Um, We're going to get it fixed. We'll get a new light. We'll do something. Um, but I just don't... I, I don't want... I want to help people find that way and be happy. That's what I want. And I want to be happy too in that way. Yeah. They also Financial talk freedom about, is a big thing for me. Go ahead. Yeah. They also talk about low stress. Um, because they what is this? Up, what is the thing that you're listening to? It's, um, it's the same Ravi. It's the same Nav Ravikant. He was on Joe Rogan's podcast mm. and I listened to his episode multiple times Maybe you should send it to me you we i think that's the next um project because i think wow. um getting into his teachings because he's like mm-hmm. a really really wealthy investor um and he has a phenomenal balance that most of these guys don't have and he's very very measured in his approach to thinking um and he's not like radical or whatever he's just like measured and i think it's great um he talks about meditation a lot and he talks about low stress how to keep your stress low because he used the example of um of warren buffett Mm -hmm. and he was saying like he's so low stress and this and that blah 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 and he's so happy like truly happy and joe rogan was like but he looks like shit. Mm-hmm. He's a very, very old man, but he drinks like six Cokes a day and eats like all the fast food and this that and that. That is true. And he goes, well, that's a testament to his frame of mind and how, how powerful it stress is. is and how powerful stress is mm-hmm. because he can do all that abuse to his body 
and still be here at 80 plus. And it shows you how debilitating stress, stress is. Mm-hmm. So you can be doing like very, very like abusive things to yourself and still be fine if you keep your stress low. Mm-hmm. And then Joe was like, maybe it's like, you know, what he gets from drinking six Cokes is like, oh, the Coke's like, oh, all the sugar. Oh my God. It's great. And you just like get that relief, that, yeah. that beauty from the sugar. Yeah. And I'm like, what an amazing thing to, to be able to acknowledge and to be aware of the thing that causes you stress and then to just like kind of boop, nip it and take it away, you know? And I think it is um, very, 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 very important mm-hmm. for people to acknowledge because like when you're stressed, it's like your productivity. If you're doing something that is mindful and requires mm-hmm. brain power, you you just have to be really, really careful of this. What stresses you? Being with people I don't want to be with. Being around people I don't want to be around. That's the only thing that stresses me. Mm. Yeah, just being around people I don't enjoy. Because for, for most other things... Um, do you do that a lot? Be around people I don't enjoy? No. That's good. No. And I mean, it has its pros and cons because <laughs> there's some people who are not fun to be around. But you have to. But I have to. You know what I mean? And it's so sad. It's so sad. Um, you know, and I don't know what to do. It's a it's a, a guy who's gonna introduce me to a just just do it. <laughs> he keeps talking while he does it, and it's just like he can't do the two things at once. Actually, I was doing it anyway. Um, so it that brings me incredible stress, and I typically just like remove myself, mm-hmm. so it never sticks around because like you know I just I'm like no. I don't want this. Can that go away? Mm, no. no. What about you? Money. Money. Just. I think most like a lot of people say like, oh, money don't doesn't solve, doesn't make you happy. It's like yes, that's true. It doesn't make you happy, but it relieves a lot of stress. Yeah. It does, and I'm a very materialistic person. Mm-hmm. Um, and it. That's funny that you say that. What do you mean? Most people won't admit that. No, I am. I'm a very materialistic person. Not in the way of like, I, I need to go shopping all the time and I need to do this, but I, I love objects. <laughs> like objects bring me genuine joy, <laughs> yeah. which is, I, it's not maybe the greatest thing to say, but it's like, I would be a lot happier climbing into a, into my, into like my custom modded GTR or my onto my motorcycle. And it's not so much the object itself, it's the pleasure that it brings me while I'm doing the activity. You know, it's like my surfboard brings me a lot of pleasure, <laughs> like a lot of pleasure. And it's not the, this, the snowboard itself, although I do love maintaining it and working on it and doing whatever to it. It's the act of doing what I can do with it and taking care of that thing and having that thing. It's not like to show off, but it, it's the things that it allows me to do. So I, yeah, I'm very materialistic in that way. I'm not like the, I don't buy things to strut around in them. You know, like I, I don't own any like, what are, what are they, fad, fad, fad brands. You know what I mean? Like I don't have a big Gucci belt or a fucking, and nothing to people who do, even though I said fucking, but, and I don't have like Prada shit or do they make men Prada stuff? I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know. See, but I don't do that. It's just like, but I love my, my Chrome Industries bags. I, I love my skateboards and my snowboards and my, all that. And I love cars and I love motorcycles and it's never a, a, a like an outward expression of that, but it's just what I really enjoy and what brings me joy. Isn't it funny how people like we look down on the person who's different than us while we're the same yeah thing in a different thing no you say you don't judge people but you do 
Because the way you said it was like, oh, those people are, they're the idiots. No, and no, like, I don't think they're the idiots. Here's the thing. Here's why I, I do judge those people. I'll be honest. I'll be honest with myself here. Okay. It's because the only reason they buy those things is not because they enjoy them. It's because the outward appearance. A lot of times people don't feel good in the clothes they wear, but they wear them because they're name brand or they're in fashion. That's not true. A, no, a lot of the time it is true. I so know a lot the, of people the, who act like that. The big brands are better. No, I agree with you. I a buy Gucci, big, I a buy Gucci big belt brand will last you too. much longer than anything else. A Ferragamo belt would last you a lot longer. I actually uh, really like Ferragamo. I they, like how they look. They last forever. Yeah. The big no, brands, no, no. they don't break. No, I'm not saying, for example, are they, what's the red bottom shoes? Louis um, Louis Vuitton. Christian Louis Vuitton. Yeah. Uh, just just the, just as a point of reference there, Christian Louis Vuittons, they are indestructible. That's what I was about to say. The heels will never break. Oh my god. All you have to do is replace the, the rubber the, on the tip of the heel because it's rubber. Yes. I like those brands. Mm -hmm. I really do. I like Gucci. I like Louis Vuitton. Uh, Gilles, Louis Vuitton. Whatever. Um I like Ferragamo. I love Breitling watches. I'm not a fan of Rolex. I don't like how they look. I can appreciate them though. Mm -hmm. I love these high-end brands. I really do. I, I like them a lot. I love Ferraris. I would never drive one, but I love Ferraris. I love Lamborghinis. I love these crazy high-end expensive brands. I do. And I don't judge the people who have those things because they like them for the quality or for the look. But I, it makes me a little interested when people it makes you a little judgmental a little judgmental when people buy them just for the sake of having that brand name and for no other reason and i know a lot of people who do that a lot of the kids in my school right and i'm not saying they wear louis vuitton or whatever but they buy supreme shit right you know what mm -hmm. supreme is um or whatever big name shit it is just to have the name just for the name and but, purely but for the name the, but the point of all of this is that it's signaling like if I were that, I'm signaling to you that I'm cool, I'm hip, I'm wealthy. And it's the same thing for you. Why do you buy Chrome? It's good quality and everything is good, but it signals to the people that you know what is good. And it shows, it is signals that, that you're that's cool not, also. That's not why I buy it though. The what? only reason I buy it is because it's it doesn't break and it's more comfortable than the competitors. But how would you know that it's more comfortable? Because I've tried the competitors. I've had Patagonia, I've had North Face, I've had Burton, I've had all of them. But mm -hmm. I, I settled on Chrome because it's the best build quality. And those are all cool brands or interesting band, brands, and it's not so much about Is Patagonia the, name. the same um, price tag as, as um Sometimes as more expensive. A lot of the time more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, same, like with anything, it's just like, I look purely for the quality. And it's like, that's what I don't think you understand about me. It's like, the reason I want fancy cars is not because I want a fancy car for what other people think. It's mm -hmm. because I like I like the 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 engineering that goes into them. Mm -hmm. Like my favorite car, if anybody knows anything about cars, is a Nissan GTR R35. Mm -hmm. You have no idea what I just said. My favorite car, I could have anything, is mm -hmm. a Nissan. It doesn't really stand out. It doesn't, it's not like a showy car. You'd look at it and be like, oh, that's like, that it could be a cheap car. The car is $200,000, mm -hmm. but you can't tell that from the outside. <clears throat> and uh, that's not even a very expensive car in like the luxury car end, but I love the engineering about it. And I love all that. Mm -hmm. The motorcycles I love are not like the most crazy expensive shit. Like I like Yamahas. I think they look really cool and they're easy to maintain and they run really well. And those are not the most expensive. I do like Ducatis because they're fucking cool and they they like look really cool, but and they sound fucking good. But it's not. It's never for the the show off factor of it. I don't know, man. I think we're all signaling because when like even by you saying that, it's like virtue signaling. By you saying it's not for the this, it's not for the that. It's like people who compete meditating. It's like I meditate five times a day or like you're um, doing a Zoom call with the bookshelf behind you. It's like virtue signaling. You're saying like, I'm conscious, I'm this and that. So I have a big problem when we judge each other for the things that we do because we're all doing those things, but just in different ways. My you're saying no, you're no, no, better. No, no. No, I want to explain wait, to you no. real quick, real quick. I want to clarify. I have no problem with someone signaling. Mm -hmm. I have a problem when people do it just for the fad. Because it happens a lot. But what's the difference though? No, Mark, because 
your identity and just fitting in are two different things. Mm -hmm. So when someone wears a certain type of clothing that they don't feel good in, and I've had conversations with people about this Mm -hmm. who tell me this, they're like, I don't feel good wearing these clothes. I don't feel comfortable, but I wear them because everyone else wears them and they're cool. Mm -hmm. That's what bothers me because that's an identity crisis. We all do those things, Steph. We all do it. Like we all figure. I don't know. What do you do that 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 is purely to fit in? There are tons of things I don't talk about. There are tons of things that I see and I don't say because it's not acceptable. I don't believe that. I don't understand why we expose our entire body but cover our privates. It doesn't make any sense. There's six or seven variation of dicks. It's true. And same thing, six or seven variation of pussies. Mm -hmm. You have very short dicks like this, then you have short and thick, then you have like medium size, then you have very long and thick, and then you have very long and skinny, then you have like in the medium, like, you know, five or six inches. It's all the same. If you show me your dick, I'll be like, oh, I've seen this before. It's not like, oh my God, it's a unique penis. No, No, it's not. Why are we doing this? I think those things are so stupid. Of course. But I cover myself because I think, okay, I don't want to scare the townspeople. Well, you can't go out with Why your dick not? out. You can't. You Why just not? you'll get arrested. So that's what I'm saying. So these are that's one of the things that But I those are rules in. the society agreed to. No, we yes. didn't agree to. It was it was forced upon us. Did you agree to this? To wearing clothes? Yeah. No. no, you just fell you want to go out in the winter in New York with your little that, that's winky besides out? the point, Steph. And my winky's not little. I'll tell you that right now. All right. So it doesn't make any sense. So these are some of the things. So when people say like, oh, I don't do anything for blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, stop it. I think we're all, maybe we should all just realize the foibles within ourselves and our own fucking insecurities and our own instabilities and just acknowledge that we all have these things and because we acknowledge that we all have these things then we'll be less judgmental of the next person because you realize that we're doing the same thing just in a different way okay that's it like i mean some people are bad people or some people are doing things for what i would deem wrong reasons but when when you really really think about it we're all doing things for selfish reasons some people's reasons are just not attached to something bigger because you're saying that um you want to like you know do something to help the other person help upcoming like youngsters Mm -hmm. who want to do big things like you well what if your name was never attached to it? your face was never attached to it it's just the work you wouldn't do it that's not true. Yes, it, yeah, it is. Yes, it is true. Steph, I, I remember there are multiple instances where we could do something like the business or the corporation or the team could do something and you were not involved and you say, no, I want my face in there. Like what? Like, oh, um, let me see. Ah, I can give you an example. When we're at Huron and the team was like, they pitched the like there was this video of this guy he was like going to different countries and he did a montage of like him in like different places and the pictures were just like coming up in like different countries and they were like oh why don't we do this with art and we could go to like different locations and put the art like the art in the middle of the west I didn't want highway either of us in it on that video that's absolutely untrue because the way they pitched it stop let me explain they said you know, we can put one in the middle of the West Side Highway when the traffic stops and then you have the whole, the, the Freedom Tower and everything in the background. Then we could do one in Grand Central, one in like Penn Station, one in Little Italy, one in Soho, whatever. And they were like, Mark, you should do it. Like, you know, you do it and sit there with the painting or like walk onto the thing and whatever. And like, you can change your outfits and every, it will be different every time. And Steph goes, why can't I do it too? Like, we should both be in it. Like, why am I not in it? And they go, oh, oh, okay, who's going to take the picture? And because he's like the photographer and the videographer and the creative behind that part of the thing. I suggested first that... No, were... no, absolutely not. Steph, I remember this distinctly because it was like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't care, you know? And um, I was just like, all right, cool. 
And then I go, well, we both don't need to be in it because we don't have the, the, um, the resources to both be in it. Somebody has to be taking care of the thing. And I go, you just do it. And so I was like the person like running, you know, putting the, the thing and setting up the shot with it's the funny other person, we were both John. doing it because our other person was not good. Yeah, John wasn't good. But we were like running in the street and like setting up the easel with the, the no. piece. So you do want yourself to be featured and you do want your face attached and your name attached to it. So it's the same thing. I'm just saying, you know, maybe we shouldn't judge each not other so everything. harshly. I don't, I, I don't know about everything. But obviously not everything, you know, some things you, you just, you know, you don't care enough to be like, I want to be on it and my name on it. There's a lot of times when I like, I, I do things just to, to do them. I think that was a pretty pivotal moment, Steph, and you proved that you would like the credit. And, and I would. Yes. I'm so not don't saying say no. that you just said I'm not that saying no, no, I, I but, would do it for nothing and don't but, put my face on but, it. No, but you I would do the, the thing for the kids for nothing. I love kids, Mark. Whoa. I know that. I know that you love That's kids. That's why it's hard to say. Like <laughs> It's hard to say in these times. Fuck it. I know you love kids and you're good with kids. However, we all have that thing where like, you know, we want to be acknowledged. Of course. We Everyone want wants to, that. No, but... I think when you judge other people for that same thing, because when you signal to say supreme, it means I am a part of that community. That is what it's saying. I am a part of that community or I want to be a part of that community. Because we we're like very isolated now, like we were in like churches and, and groups and country and this and that. And we've moved away from that to a very individualistic society. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why social media is like taking us down because it's like, you know, people it's engineered to keep our attention and yeah. to keep us by ourselves and porn and TV and video games and shit like that. It's a, those are all very individual. Isn't that things. weird, though, because now sex is also more readily available than than it was before. And we're not grabbing it. No, we are. No, we're having way less. Millennials sex our, are. Nope. Okay. Le, millennials is the first generation to have this little sex. Do the research. Oh. Yeah. We're having way less sex than the baby boomers and the generation after them. <laughs> we have the resources, but it's not working out. We're very isolated. Maybe I should just have more sex. I should change the number. I should change the spectrum. Do a Genghis Khan. <laughs> <laughs> he fucked everybody. <laughs> you can't use that as a verb. <laughs> Can't use this man's name as a verb. I the man who can. who raped everybody and killed them right after. Just, he definitely did not kill them because we all have a little bit of Genghis in us. All of us have a little Asian. You're like, where did that Asian come from? It's like, oh, it's Genghis Khan. Don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, but we're people saying, have Asian eyes. We're saying all of this to say. And the reason why we talk about this on a business show is because like this part is very, very important. If you're going to have a partner where you're going to be teamed up with long term, these conversations are very, very important because it shows you who the person is. And, you know, as you go, you adjust as you go along in the process, you adjust. And then by being with someone who really, really knows you or is on that path to knowing you, yeah. it's like it brings you closer together and decision making is easier prediction is easier because you don't want a partner who's like unpredictable you know it's like it doesn't make you feel very secure and it doesn't um engender trust so i think these conversations are very important and if you're teamed up with someone and you're not friends with them i think that you're making a mistake i was watching a thing about this I was no watching a, or listening to a podcast last night. Those two guys that you fucking hate. The two white dudes? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're like a comedy duo. Um, and they were talking about that and it's like their capacity of working together. It's like there's very few successful partnerships. Mm -hmm. Very few. And like most partnerships, like even like Key and Peel and stuff, they do things most of the time separately. It's like I that's not us though. Like yeah. we do everything together, like all the things. And I I think it's like it's gonna be a really big thing. Yeah. Cause it's 
you're just better as a team. I think so. You always are. Always. I mean, it's not like you can't have like individual like like side projects or whatever. Um, yeah, but it's always more successful when you have a team. Everything is. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with a team. Well, I mean, I'm not saying no, first of all. So let's just be very clear. Um, but uh, the guy who did Get Out, Jordan Peele, mm -hmm. that was very, very good. Yes, it was. I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm saying, and I'm not saying that the work is any worse or anything. I'm mm -hmm. saying it's like, it's funny to me that like, you don't see other partnerships like this. Like ours? Like yeah. What? Like friends and stuff. Yeah. You see like, um, I'd say Obama and his wife and stuff like that. But like, you don't see like two friends like that work together all the time and do everything. Yeah. That's just different. I think that's interesting. Mm, that's true. Do you, is that something that you want to what? like us doing everything together? I've already told like... you that I don't like winning alone. Mm. <laughs> you have nobody to share the stage with. Mm. And it's like, you, you, cause like at the end of the day, like I'm not the kind of person to be like, to, to be on stage and like look out at the crowd and be like, ah, oh, look at me. I'm, I'm more so the person to look to my left and my right and see like, we fucking did it. Mm -hmm. It's more like that. But you see, like, this is what I always ask people. How do you know? Hmm, that's how I feel. Yeah. See, this is, I mean, I'm not a big Jordan Peterson touter or, or fucking whatever, but I think one of the things or the main thing that I learned from that man is every ideal that you have, if you study it up close and from a distance and put it under the microscope, you realize a few things. Number one, it's not your own ideal. And number two, it's just not true about you. <laughs> you know, it's just not true. Um, I'm not saying that is not true about you. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying until you can test this, you cannot say, yes, I am this person. It's like, how do you know? It's like, I hate, like, like Nailene's kid. Mm -hmm. He was born a vegetarian because mm -hmm. he hated meat ever mm -hmm. since he was born. Mm -hmm. Like he just, he doesn't like the texture. He doesn't eat meat yeah. and she tricked him or tried to trick it multiple times, like by making it look like fruit or like mm -hmm. cutting it up and dicing it. And he just hates it. He's like, yuck, disgusting. And, and he, he spits it out. It out. Oh. Yep. Every time. And she goes, Mark, my kid is so weird. I don't understand my child. And she could relate to him in a lot of ways. And that was one of the main ones. Like he just, he didn't like meat. He didn't want to eat it. And he ate everything else. She had to make him like, rice and cauliflower and then lots of fruits and lots of vegetables and shit and it's, it's very calorie very it's healthy. very carb heavy it so is, he's yeah. like thick yeah but he's his dad is like six five so he's gonna so be, he's like gonna really be fine big. yeah he'll, he'll be, be fine, fine. <laughs> a vegetarian fucking <laughs> strong man <laughs> huge um, good for him and he's just like that kid he's like super artistic mm -hmm. you know he he's just a different i'd child. like to teach him to surf i think it'd be fun to teach that kid to surf yeah so he does his own thing, like, you know, so I don't know. And this is why I want to explore like so many different parts of my life, because like, how do you know? So I don't know. And I think what well, is this? It's this identity thing where you're afraid I cheer people on of yourself. Yeah, this is true. Explain this. Well, you just said it's true. So you explain it. Maybe you have a better insight. No, I no, I, I <laughs> huh? What? You explain it. No, what were you going to say? Why do you think that? Why did was that such an immediate response? I don't know. You like teaching people things and then see them master it and whatever. <laughs> no. I, I, I get very excited when I see somebody learning something new or start something new. I'm not the kind of person like you. You always show up and you're always super nice and you listen all the time. I'm more so the person that... that <laughs> If you start a new business and you need help, I'm always there. I always, I strongly believe in like not asking people for, for free services and especially somebody with a new business or 
anything like that. So I'm that kind of person. And also like teaching people new skills. I'm so a lot of the time, and it's a downfall for me because a lot of the time, <laughs> a lot of the time I know what's best for you. Yeah. And I want to impart that knowledge on you or, or help you with it. And a lot of people don't want that. Yeah. But it's just like, and that's the type of person I am. Like I'm, I like seeing people win. It just, it makes me happy to see somebody start something new and get confident at it and, and, and enjoy it. That's why I like sharing surfing. But that's with condition though. What that's not like unconditional, like seeing people win. Like what? Like what if they beat you? I'm good with it. No, you're not. Why not? When have you ever seen that? The, the very nature of someone who's competitive stuff means you don't want to be beaten. And if you are, you're very angry. Me? Not you. I don't think I get angry when I lose. Have you tested this? Yes. I played competitive sports when, most of my life. And I, I never got I, like I never got angry when I lost. I was never like upset with myself or upset with my competitors. And I never like hated any of my competitors. I, I, the only time I'm ever competitive is in a game and I always cheer my competitors on. Do you congratulate them when they beat Yes, you? I do. Okay. Always. I'm never that kind of person that's like, yeah, fuck, I lost. Like, fuck, I never get mad when I lose. That's good. That's really good. Because it's just like, I, cool. I'll like, for me, my idea is like, next time I'll beat your ass. Because mm -hmm. now I know, okay. and it's and then it's like it's fun. Like I I like I like it. That's why I don't like winning a lot, mm -hmm. because a lot of the time the person gets mad. I don't particularly love losing, mm -hmm. but I don't really like winning either because then my competitors get upset and I'm like, why are you upset? Like it's a like, I won. Cheer like cheer me on. I won, because mm -hmm. I did it. For, I would do it for you. You know, like celebrate the win. And then like, mm -hmm. if you lose, like just get better or move on. You know, it's, it's never crushing for me, so. Mm. That's good. Yeah. It just means I have to get better. That's good. That's good. What do we have on the chopping block for today? We have seven minutes to go. Um, I have to, I have a bunch of emails to um, some realtors that I spoke with in the past mm -hmm. and they're like pretty excited to have further conversations. This shit here, like business development is like so hard because ah, like, shit. people don't wanna, people don't wanna like, how do you say this? People don't want to, mm -hmm. um, People do not when like change. Current. Yeah, people don't like change. They don't like risk. I think it's change. I think it's change. People don't like change. That's why the IT department and marketing and sales are always at odds. Because <laughs> marketing they have to figure out how to sell the new idea that like IT or r and is coming out with. No, I think it's the other way around. No, R&D says that this is where the world is going and then marketing has to figure out how oh, okay. to oh, yeah. I heard put it else. out there. Yeah, yeah. IT is not the same as, as development. Um, and then the salespeople have to figure out how to sell it. Yeah, you know how to actually pitch it to individuals that are like B two B stuff. No, you know B two B sales are fucking incredibly hard because it takes so long. It's the worst type. It's the worst type of business to get into if you're not patient. Yeah, if you're and not it's patient, the it's not. hardest business to get into. But it's the most rewarding because you it get is. one and yeah. you're set up. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. and then all you need is that social proof or that one company to like test you and say. Oh my god, it was yeah, amazing. It's just and then, one, and then, know. but it takes so fucking long. It takes long, and especially with big corporate companies because they're so slow. Everything is super slow. Can't make lateral decision. You got to talk to ten people to get 
you know, to hear that you need to talk to an 11th person. And then it takes months to... <laughs> then all to, the meetings, to schedule yeah. the meeting. Oh, I don't have any availability until next year. This time, it's like, what are we talking about? It's so bad. And then it's like people are scared to integrate it because then their jobs are on the line because they're not like... You get it wrong. Yeah, their yeah. jobs are on the line. And then yeah. most of the time, people don't even get recognized for making the decision or implementing the new thing. And then most of the times, the new implementation is wrong. It's, it's It doesn't work. Yeah. Like of all the the new big fucking shit that comes out every year that changes our lives, there are tons of them that just didn't make it or just didn't work, you know. Yeah. So it's I never want to be that company that didn't work. No, 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 what? no. That's a that's a given. You're always gonna fail. Oh, that doesn't integrate. That doesn't integrate. Mm. That that doesn't try new things. Because the second, yeah, the second you stop innovating and, and doing that is like the second that shit stops. Or someone else passes you. Or someone else passes you. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's scary and strange. Um, so that's what we have. That's what I have going on today. Just reaching out to a lot of people. I have also uh, another bunch of salespeople to uh, interview and then a bunch of others to send back responses to. Yeah. Yes or no. So um, all of them, yes. No. 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 Mm. Um, all of them, yes. Anyway, um, so yeah. I thought they were, were all doing. good. No. They're not. No. no. Bummer. So that's what that's what I got going on today. It's gonna be a very call heavy day. I I just put down my phone after you left. I was in it. My turn. Yes. I. Wow. Steph broke up with his therapist yesterday. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. Uh, so I have to. We have to do all the social media stuff today. Oh yeah. Um. So I have to schedule a shoot with you for your personal stuff. I gotta find a photographer for my personal content. I'll do it. Okay. I gotta. Fi- <laughs> I gotta figure out the um the setups for our YouTube channels. Mm-hmm. Both of our YouTube channels. I have to upload all the other videos. I got to cut up all the video content from the previous, vi- these videos that we had so we can set up a good bank of it. I got to send a follow-up email to two of my clients because I put the wrong music in for one video that I edited because I forgot he sent me video music. So I got to change that, which is fine. It'll take two minutes. Um, and then I have- When did you realize this? When he emailed me. Um, oh, he said you have the wrong music? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then I have to send a follow up email with what the web dev person I have. Well, I'm the web dev person, so I have to get her to follow up. Who? Oh. Um, Wait, what about the investor people? Did you send them that email? I did, yeah. Okay, what did they say? They haven't gotten back yet. Oh. Uh, and then I have to. Did he acknowledge receipt of it? No, I don't think so. Hmm. Let's figure that out. Um, and then I have to start, you know, I have to post everything on, finish posting everything on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. You should have started that. Well, no, that's fine. Uh, oh, and I have to pay the U-Haul toll. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's my day in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. Then we got shit to do. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy. Are you happy? I felt very connected to you after yesterday. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. That's good. It's really good. It was a good conversation afterwards. It was a good conversation. Good convo. And we stayed back um, for a lot and just like talked. Yeah. I felt, I felt, I felt really, really horribly because I spent my whole life like not wanting to do exclusive shit because I didn't want to exclude people because it's typically the same people who get, who get excluded every time. And I was very, very saddened to know that the person I love very, very much felt not understood or not, you know, fully in the group. Um, right under my nose. And that made me really sad. Well, I figured it out. Do you? No, no, no. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. Maybe money will solve all my problems. Mm. Maybe when you get the money, you'll feel uh, understood. <laughs> money understands me. That's how it goes. 
That's how I feel. Why do you think I'm I'm so understood? Yep. So all right, that's how it goes. I just started the recording over again, but do your outro. We have shit to do today. So we're done. I think so. What do you what? I'm done. You wanna talk about my understoodness? No. Oh. I'll just continue being misunderstood for the rest of my All right, life. so let's talk about no, it. No, I'll just <laughs> kill myself. That's one option. Not anyhow. I love you. And I love you. <laughs>